Okay, how are you feeling? I want to welcome Courtney to the stage. Courtney, you here? Yes, give a hand to Courtney, please. One of the most important people here at National Sawdust. Yes. And we're going to have a conversation. Yes. With you and I. And yes. Hey, give oh, a hand yeah. to DVR Lab one more time. <laughs> We've got uh, Jed Relian. Yes. Saza and Wheezy. Lady Caress. Melina. Rachel. Jordan Klitsky. Adele F. Rich Woodson. I'm Daniel. All right. Hi. Yes, Hello. so I am not Paula. Um, no. I'm, I'm Courtney Casey, the executive director here. Unfortunately, Paula is feeling ill. She couldn't make it, um, but it was amazing. And congratulations to all y'all. It was a really fantastic performance and really lovely to have all of your spirit and energy here at National Sada. So thank you so very much. It was such a joy. Thank really you. Thank you for it. having thank us. Thank you. Yes, yes of course. Yes. Of course. So we've got about 10 minutes, yeah. maybe, to, um, I think we can maybe even dive into questions, comments. Thank you for being here, by the way. What's your name? What's your name? <laughs> Come here. I want to hear your name. What's your name? Leia. Ooh, Leia. Leia, who's this? Papa. Oh, nice. <laughs> Papa, thank you for bringing Leia. And really, yes, you had my attention. You had my attention, you know, because I'm thinking about my son. Our children, they're not just children, right? They're our children. Brooklyn, New York, the United States, the world. So you're the future, so thank you for being here. That's a big deal, yes. <laughs> Audiences have impact. Okay. But did you have any questions, anything on your mind? Uh, yes, go ahead. Yes, I'll, I'll repeat for everybody. So I'm just going to paraphrase. So he's saying it uh, seems like everyone's piece had some reference to childhood or past or history. Is that, was that done um, with, um, with an intention? Yes, anyone want to answer? Go ahead, Jordan, Sarah, Sasa. We'll get to you. Oh, Melina. Sure. Uh, so we've all been developing these pieces over the last school year. And it's absolutely just synchronistic kismet that themes like this emerged. So thank you for noticing. <laughs> I can't say too much different than that, but basically we didn't even realize the theme was coming together until we were rehearsing together. And we're like, oh, there's kind of a theme here. Hmm. Um, but yeah, many of us have been developing these pieces over a long period of time, so um, they just happen to come together like that. Yeah, I definitely think it's happened since. Although I will say I feel like we've all worked with Daniel or DBR, whatever you want to call him. And, um, <laughs> and, and I, I feel like he does have a, whether it's conscious or subconscious, an influence on like what inspires us because his energy is in the room and sort of certain things I've kept caught on to inspire, inspire him as well. And I feel like there might be a little bit of that. Yes, yeah, so I, I think, I mean, as a, as a Haitian American composer, I, I can't help but tell stories. You know, it's part of my culture. My mother, my father, I'm still telling their stories in a lot of ways. Um, I've worked with great storytellers like Bill T. Jones, right? Like Savion Glover, like Carl Hancock's Rux, um, Jeffrey Ziegler even, right? So um, there's, a, there's a story to this building even, right? This space. Yes, there is a story. But actually, I have a question. Can I ask another question? Um, I, what I thought was very interesting is you started off talking about the room that your mother was in, and then I felt like we were a little bit in the church experience as well. And then a lot of the folks here were opening up the room to the concert experience. So I was curious if this is something you all talk about in your DBR lab about the concert experience. How, I mean, the fact that we're being so engaging with the public audience is not something that's normally done at National, we, we try at National Sawdust to be very intimate. It's one of the best things we have is that the, we're this really small space and it sounds great, so we don't have to create you know illusions that we're in a concert hall, but you really consciously said, let's break down the barriers and let's actually find the audience. And I was wondering if that was something you also worked with, um, if that was conscious, 
or something that you guys are also just kind of bringing to the fore as the younger generation of um, creators right now? This is such a good question. And so anyone want to answer this? Adele? No, Caress, go ahead, Caress. Yeah, no, I want to say, um, I think that for us, well, for me specifically, I do spoken word poetry a lot with a mix of music, as you guys can see tonight. But I find that intimate venues, for one, are better for that. It's better received in that way when you don't have as many distractions and people can truly and actually connect. The ability for a performer to actually look in the eyes of the audience is something that you know we, ha we don't have often. You know, We always have this fourth wall up and we're like, don't connect. But in that connection, you actually really get to see that realism and, and between that is where the audience and the performer really make a, a true connection and where impact actually happens. And I think when we work with DBR, um, he's so good at that, you know, um, immediately from when he walks in the room, he's like, well, just feel the room. I'm, I'm going to feel it. I'm going to get in here and I'm going to, hey, how you doing? You know what I mean? And he's like going and he's like, as he's building that thing, we're like, okay, yeah. So the room makes me feel like this. Okay. You know, and that's what that sounds like. And, and I think that's always been a part of the culture, you know, with us and even all the performances that we do, we're always engaging the community. And like Melina talked about, it's always about that community engagement. So that's always been something um, in our, yeah, in our work. I mean, she summed it up pretty well, but um, I grew up in the classical orchestra, and so the, there was a major barrier between us, and so I never grew up having this. So I'm very thankful to have a community where we can talk to our audience, because the audience is a part of the experience that we wanted originally, right? This show couldn't happen without you. So that's the imp really mo the most important part. No, I think, it, I think it's, it's something that, um, I, I also teach a class at the New School in here in New York. And uh, I can see some wonderful violinists right here. Vivek, <laughs> I'm going to point him out. Yes, he is. And uh, we're engaged in a class called Artists as Activists where we're literally talking about this. And, um, you know, I mean, I, I, um, I don't know. I, I, I am trying to bring my history and my race and my culture and the things that I value most to what I call my violin. Not the violin, it's my violin. There's a difference. Ownership, definition, right? To be a composer is one thing. To be a Haitian, a black, Haitian American composer is something very different. Not just for, for me, but for her, for you, right? So more than just preaching, I think it is about intimacy. And architecture does have a lot to do with it. My good friend Peter is here. I'm not going to point out everybody because that's not fair. But, <laughs> you know, it, it is not an easy thing to do in certain rooms, you know. Um, I'm, I've been at Carnegie Hall. That's a very different space. Maybe not as intimate. And, of course, then the question is still about race and gender. When I step out onto that stage, not only who's been there before me, Stravinsky to the Beatles, right? To Ella, right? To who are building the spaces that we are supposed to create in, right? So there's vulnerability all around. There's about four more minutes. What else should we talk? Oh, questions, yes. Oh, there, oh okay, we're gonna give 30 minute rounds, yes. 30 second, 30 second <laughs> rounds. So um, this was just a little excerpt from an evening length work. It actually started as an ens ensemble show. We have a full ensemble show with it, our dance company, Epic. Um, and Weezy and I are, are now developing it into a two-person show. So in that show, he plays the part of time, and he kind of takes us throughout the journey as she is going through her mind. She's going back in time into her, uh, her memories of her past, visions of her future, things that she's feeling presently in the machine. And you can see throughout the whole show that her perspective starts to change. You know, she starts with this total attitude and doesn't care. And then by the time you get to the end of the show, she is having this like huge encounter and trying to figure out what's really, really important in your life. So his, his character is obviously very important. He's going to kind of narrate, but also um, bring kind of the reality to the situation, you know, kind of telling us how it is and how we should be thinking. You know what I'm saying? Who else wants to talk about that? Or whatever, they, they, it's kind of ingrained in the DNA. Absolutely. 
Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Talk about communication. You just were there and no, this is in the draft. And you were just like, right, this is going to be a slam dunk great because we had no idea it was going to be voted one of the top mm-hmm. five. But you can tell even as they worked on it and they, and they came up with that studio and it was all really done mm. right there. Beautiful. And, uh, it was anyway one of the great exper- communication experiences. Awesome. See, and we all have that in common. Awesome. Yeah, Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. that. Thank you. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 And what brought the photograph? And then the pictures with the wedding, wedding shoot and the photograph. And you guys brought it up right before that thing. And you were like taking pictures. And I go in to our studio up at Sutter. Gone. You know? So that's what that was all about. And I was like, oh, man, this is great. And I know it took four of us photo workers. Amy and Mike. <laughs> yes. Got a few more minutes. Yes. Yes. You should always have a question. You should always have a comment. No. Maybe one more. Something burning. Oh. Very nice. Yes. Oh, great. What a great question to end on. Oh, what next? Well, tomorrow we have a meeting at 11 a.m. And I'm going to present to the group. Well, first, well, just real quick, as you might not know, so we we are engaged as contributors at Arizona State University. I don't like the word student. That's very 1997. We're all contributors to a classroom of ideas. Okay, so I'm there in a particular role as an institute professor. Some are there conventionally as students, contributors. Some are there conventionally as alumni, contributors. We're all equal. Oh, and I love it. If you just looked at us on the street, you don't know who's who. Isn't that great? I'm the oldest. I'm 48. <laughs> okay? So what's next is the, the what do you call it? The, the BHAG, the big, hairy, audacious goal. I just learned this. Okay? So you should always have a big, hairy, audacious goal. So tomorrow, we're going to talk about literally what is next. And isn't that wonderful that young people, some as young as 21 years old, are, yeah, right? I hear you are on this stage doing their thing fearlessly. What's the first thing that you sing? The words. Yeah, oh, sorry. Yeah, repeat it. What's the first thing you sing? Sing out? Yeah, sing out. Sing for the world? Sing, sing out, sing for the world. <laughs> Won't you raise up your hands to the sky? The world seeming to be on fire, threats everywhere. I won't get too into it because I want to end on what I think is a positive note. I look at this, I look at these young people, and I rest well at night. I'm inspired. The fires and the walls burning outside are in their heart and soul rising up. At Arizona State University, we're referred to as the sun devils. But really, these are earth angels who have come down to lift us up. You dig? And I'll end on this, you know. I'll just say, yeah, backstage, it took me by surprise. Uh, We were, one of our members took us into a circle and she had us do prayer together. And it, I didn't even know how to respond because I'm so far removed in some ways from God, in some ways from my mother that I talk about, right? That's probably a Catholic guilt. But more than that, I look at these young people, I hear their work, I listen to their song. I know that the future is well. The future is exciting. And I have, no, no matter what you hear, right? I'll, I'll, I'll end on this. Every year I come up with something to say to myself and my son. When politicians fail us, artists have always led the way. Yeah. Thank you so much. Have a great night.